this lesson tonight. We pray that it will indeed touch and move somebody tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, let's get into it. Revelation 2, verse 11 and 26. Christ helps us. 
I don't care how much real power you say you have. Some folks say, I have real power, and they'll do well for a little while. But then they'll fall right back into the same thing. That's why every day you have to look to Christ if you want to overcome. Every day. You're not safe for a second without looking to Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness, friend? You have to keep your eyes on Christ. Can I get a witness, friend? All right. All right. Now, uh, how many of you believe that Jesus hates sin? How many of you believe that when Jesus comes into your heart, that you will hate sin? Amen. If you still love sin and Christ is in your heart, something's wrong. Are you with me? If you still love sin and you say Christ is in my heart, something is wrong. Do you agree? Amen. Now sin is a crime because sin murdered who? In the Old Testament, when a person sinned many times, they would have to take a knife and slit the throat of the lamb. And it was God's way of letting them know, your sin is going to kill my son. And as they would slit that throat, hopefully they would, they would have such an impression on themselves that they would not do it again. Because every time you sin, remember, our sins put Jesus on on the cross. Our sins put Jesus on the cross. If only we could just think of Jesus just before we sin. I think of we would have some sin going down a little bit in our lives. You agree with that, friends? Amen. Help us, Jesus, tonight. Now, drive to Romans 6, 4 through 6, and this is where baptism comes in. Baptism is a celebration of the change that Jesus has made in your life. Now you go to Romans, the fourth chapter and verse six, uh, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. Romans, if you study the lesson, you know exactly what this is all about. Romans, the sixth chapter, verse. Really, I mean the sixth chapter, verse four through six. I'm sorry. Yeah, Romans, the sixth chapter, verses four through six. All right, what does it say here? Uh, therefore, we are what? Buried with him by what? Baptism into death. Notice it said we are buried with him by baptism. So baptism represents a burial. That like as Christ was raised up from the what? By the will of the Father. Even so we also should walk in the what? Newness of life. Notice that word buried. Notice that word buried. Now look at verse 5. For if we have been what? Planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So, what celebrates the resurrection of Christ? Sunday worship or baptism? Keep that in mind. Look at verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is what? Crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve what? Sin. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now, friends, if it's a baptism in the Bible, it, for it to really be a true baptism, you must go down. Because if you don't go down in the water, if you're not buried in the water, it's not a true baptism because it doesn't represent the death, burial, the resurrection of Christ. Neither the death, burial, or resurrection of you was to accept Christ. Because when Christ went down, he was down. But then when he came up, he came up with some power, a new person. Can I get a witness? Now when we're baptized, when we go down, we are telling God, I'm burying my old habits of life. And then when we come up, we're telling God, you have resurrected me to a new life. I'm leaving my old life behind. So every time someone goes down in the water and comes back up, he is actually celebrating this verse. He's celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And again, witness. 
you have died to the old ways of life, and now you have arisen to a new way of life. The old person in you is dead. You're not the same. Can I get a witness? You're different. Folks said, no, you may want to keep you as the same. But then that's when you have to show them that, no, I'm changed. I'm not the same. Can I get a witness, friend? I am not the same. You know you have folks come up to you now. Or oh, won't you smoke with me or party with me? But you got to tell them, listen, man, I have been buried and resurrected through Christ. Can I get a witness? Now, is baptism something magical? It's not magical. You really, it's a symbol of what Christ has done for you. But if you just trust in the water, like one preacher said, you will go down the dry devil and come up a wet devil. Are you with me, friend? You trust in the water. I remember somebody was being baptized long ago in some church, and the man accidentally hit the person's head when he put her down, and she came up cursing. <laughs> You see, friend, the water didn't do it. See, Jesus does it. And the water shows that it's been done. Can I get a witness, friend? The water shows your bravery. It shows your faith. And that's one reason why it's so important. But it's also important in another way. Uh, and here's a question here. Take out your envelopes now. Is baptism... Take out your envelopes. Envelope, sorry. Is baptism as important as salvation? Yes or no? No, this is quiet now. Quiet. Just put yes or no, and then we'll get the answer. Then we can drive on to Mark. Matthew, Mark, second book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark. All right, good class tonight. Matthew, Mark. Mark, the 16th chapter, at verse 16. All right. Mark 16, verse 16. All right. Mm -hmm. Mark 16, verse 16. All right, here we go. He that what? Believeth and is what? Shall be what? But he that believeth not shall be what? So now you can give the answer. Is baptism as important as salvation? He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Shall be saved. So how many people put yes for that? All right, beautiful, beautiful. Now, look at John. Keep driving. Two books, I believe. John 3, verse 5. John 3, verse 5. John 3, verse 5. All right, you all come on in here. We're trying to fill up this middle here a little bit. John 3, verse 5. What does the Bible say? Jesus did what, friends? Yes. Answer and said, Verily, verily, I said to thee, except a man be what? Born of water. Born of water. And of what? He, he what? Yeah. All right, notice the word cannot. He said, unless you're born of the Spirit and born of the water, you cannot enter into God's kingdom. So obedience to this must be very important. Amen? Amen. Obedience must be very important. The Lord says you cannot enter into, uh, into the kingdom. Now, let me ask you this. Was the thief on the cross baptized? Put yes or no on the envelope. Quiet now. Put yes or no on the envelope. This is why I'm going to ask you on the envelope. Was the thief on the cross baptized? Put yes or no on the envelope. Was the thief on the cross baptized? All right. How many of you put no? All right. All right. Give yourselves an answer. <laughs> All right. Now, Jesus said you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven except you're baptized. But the thief on the cross was not baptized. So what's going to happen to him? He couldn't be baptized because he had died on the cross. But Jesus knew that if he would have lived and it would have come down from the cross, that he would have been baptized. So Jesus gave him credit for that. What does that tell us? That you better have a near-death excuse 
not to be baptized. Are you with me, sir? You see, the Lord knows what we'll do and what we won't do. Now, if you study the lessons, how many ways of baptisms are out there? There's only one way in the Bible, though, right? Only one way in the Bible, but how many ways uh, of baptisms are out there amongst the churches? Once again, we have another example of the churches doing something that the Bible never told them to do. Uh, uh, you have a sprinkling, but that's not your baptism, not according to the Bible. You have uh, rose petals, salt, and they say you can even be baptized by email now. <laughs> baptism by email. Baptism over the phone. I mean, all kinds of ways out there. One preacher took a water hose one time and sprayed down folks and said, you've been baptized. But those baptisms could never work because they never represent the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You must go down. As a matter of fact, baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to go down, to go under, to dip. If you don't go down, friend, it's not a baptism, and God cannot accept it uh, once we know better. Amen. So once again, we have a tradition, friend, uh, 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 that has come into the church that was not biblical. You know, at one time, though, the church, they were baptizing. Everybody was baptizing who went under. But then you had the priests. They started complaining about the robes being too heavy when they were baptized for the priests. And because the robes were so heavy when they were baptized for they said, let's do away with that. And let's do the sprinkling thing. All because of convenience. But do we serve a God of convenience? Or do we serve a God that will ask us to do something and then give us enough faith to do it? Or see if we have enough faith to do it? Are you with me? We don't serve a God. Uh, God will not ask us to do everything that's convenient. Was it convenient for Christ to die on the cross? Was it convenient for him to carry a 300 pound cross after being beaten all night long? Sometimes God will ask us to do something that is not convenient. But do we do it based on that? Or do we do it based on God told me to do it? Amen. If I tell my daughter not to touch the stove, and she gets it to me, well, God, Daddy, I don't want to touch the I just said, don't touch the stove. Right? I mean, if she thought, well, you touch the stove, if I didn't, and then so I just said, don't touch the stove. Just simple as that. I don't, I shouldn't have to explain myself. If God said it, that ought to settle it right there. Amen? That ought to settle it right there. Can I get a witness for it? So, look at Mark 1, 9 to 11. Mark 1, Matthew, Mark. Just refer to that. Mark 1, 9 to 11. And who is our example, friends? Jesus is our example and the things we do, we do because of Jesus. Does that make sense? All right, beautiful. Mark 1, 9 through 11. All right. Well, actually, you're all coming on in here. Mark 1, 9 through 11. All right. Now, how was Jesus baptized? He's our example. It came to pass in those days, the first time, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. And where was he baptized? And he was baptized by who? Now, Jesus didn't need to be baptized, did he? He was baptized to give us an example, though. Now, look at verse 10. And straightway coming, what? Up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, and what happened? The Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. Notice, friends, he came straightway up out of the water. Now, in order to come straightway up out of the water, he had to be in the water, right? Because you cannot come straightway up out of the holes. You cannot come straight up what? out of a, a cup. He came straightway up out, means he was in. And so that's the type of baptism I want. Because Christians mean that we follow Christ. Can I get away? So if Christ came straight up out, that means he was in. That means I need to be in so that I can come straight up out. Can I get away?
Now, let me ask you this. And I want you to have your envelopes ready for this. How did they join the church in the Bible days? Baptism or a letter? Quiet now. Baptism or a letter? How did they join the church in the Bible days? Just put it. Baptism or a letter? Just put baptism or a letter. How did they join the church in the Bible days? <laughs> and once you put your answer, let's go to Acts. Fifth book in the New Testament, Acts. Once you put your answer, go to Acts 2 and verse 47. Acts 2 and verse 47. All right. Acts 2 and verse 47. It's amazing how we don't hear too many sermons on baptism when baptism is so important in the Bible. It's amazing, friends. Acts 2, verse 47. What does it say? Praising God and what? Having favor with what? All the people. And what did the Lord do? And the Lord added to the church Daily, boy, that must have been some stuff going on. Daily, such as to be what? Now, how did he add them to the church? Look at verse 41. Look at verse 41. How did he add them to the church? All right. Then they that glad to receive his word. Thank God for folks who glad to receive the word. Amen. Then they that glad to receive of his word were what? And the same day there were added it. Unto them about how many souls? Three thousand. How were they added? By baptism or by letter? All right, so in the Bible days, they joined the church by what? They joined the church by what, friends? In the Bible days. I'm telling you, friends, we need to get back to the Bible days. Is that all right? Now, there are certain steps that must be taken before baptism. Let's go back to the first book in the New Testament. Matthew, are you with me, friends? Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28, first book in the New Testament. Good to hear those pages right. Matthew 28. Help us, Jesus, tonight to get this. Help us, Jesus, tonight. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Certain steps. Certain steps. That must be taken before baptism. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. All right. What are these steps? Let's read it. Do we have it, everybody? All right. What does it say? Uh, go ye therefore and do what? And teach, Sister Margaret, all nations doing what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Keep that in mind. You get all three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, then verse 20. Teaching them to do what? All things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So after we teach the gospel, then God wants us to actually appeal for baptism. Can I get a witness? Amen. He said, he said, go therefore and teach all nations. But in verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe a few things. Oh. It says some things. Oh. That teaching them to serve, to, to, to observe Says he that said, I know him, 
Sabbath is still God's time. It's still God's rest, as Hebrews, the fourth chapter. It's still his day of Revelation 1 and verse 10. Teach them, friends, that God still says to remember. Teach them the difference between the seventh day and the first day. Teach them that, that we are dust and we're not some undying soul. Teach them all ten and not just nine. Teach them that there's nothing secret about the secret rapture. Teach them that hell will destroy you and not let you live on and on and on. Teach them that the weight of sin is death. Teach them that this represents truth and this represents tricks. What is it going to be? Truth or tricks? I'm not going to be a part of the tricks of the devil. How about you tonight, friends? Teach them that the dead are sleeping in their graves in resurrection morning. Teach them that you ought to break up the shack up. Can I get a witness, friends? And thank God, friends, we have Christians all over the world working on that right now, friends. Right now, working on that. One lady said that when she was shacking up, that she would look out the window hoping that Jesus would not because she, would, she knew that if he came at that time, she would not be ready. But thank God we have folk who are working on that because they want to be ready when Christ comes. Can I get a witness, friends? Teach them, friends, that we ought not defile our bodies with drugs, drugs and alcohol and nicotine. Teach them that Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. How many of you believe that, friends? You got to teach them that we got to take care of our body. And we as Christians, we may not smoke, we may not drink, we may not do this and that, but we have addictions too, don't we? Amen. Some of us eat a little bit too much sugar. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Eat a little bit too much sugar. I, I read today that sugar is addictive. Amen. We are, we are sugar holy, some of us. But God can set you free. Can I get a witness for you? And the devil has ways of trying to kill us all. He said, if I can't get you to the smokes or through the beer or through the drugs, I'm going to get them through the sugar. They say the sugar causes depression. Sugar uh, uh, feeds cancer. I was reading about that. Facts on sugar. It feeds cancer. This is what sugar does to you. Are you with me, friend? Sugar weakens the eyesight. The devil is trying to kill us. Sugar leads to alcoholism. Some of y'all all of a sudden feel the urge, tempted to drink. You never felt that urge before. All of a sudden you're feeling it. Sugar leads to alcoholism. Sugar leads to premature aging. Some of us are older than we are because of sugar. Sugar can cause breast cancer, asthma, arthritis. It can cause a belly to poke out. to poke out, but I notice the less I eat of it, it tends to go in. Then when I eat it again, it tends to pop back out. But God is able, can I get a witness for We're being real here tonight because all of us have addictions, but he is able. They say sugar is enemy number one of bowel movements. But I'll talk about all that later when we do the health message in Revelation. Is that all right? I'll just give you a little commercial. But what I'm trying to say is that God can set us free from whatever we are addicted to. And we have to preach this in our churches. The reason why our churches today are so pathetically weak is because you have a crowd of folks who are in church still breaking God's law, still living in sin, and still Folks in the world don't even want to be bothered with Jesus anymore. Because Sister Anderson, when they get to the nightclub, the church folk are taking up all the seats. Can I get a witness, friend? Church folk are talking about, oh, I don't know about church because I saw such and such in the club the other day and then I had to see them in church. But then my first question is, what were you doing there? In order to see them. And you're getting all discouraged because you come to church and you see them in church singing in the choir. And, but how in the world did you know? And don't say God told you neither. Amen. 
because you know you've been acting like a devil through the week. How are you going to invite them? You see how the devil, how to sleep the devil is? But Christianity is not just for you. The Lord saves you so that he can use you to save others. Are you with me, friend? The devil's asleep, rascal. But God rebuke the devil. It's taking away our power to influence others. Now why is hearing the word important to baptism? Why is hearing the word important to baptism? Go to Acts 2, verse 37 and 38. Are you with me still, friends? Amen. Acts 2, verse 37 and 38. I'm not going to be with you long tonight, but I want to make sure you get this point tonight. Acts 2, 37 and 38. We don't want God to take away our witness. That's why we need to pray for each other. We need to pray for each other, friends. I'm so glad that we have some folk to be honest and say, yes, I do this, I do that. But pray for me because I know that I don't need to do it. And once you realize that, friends, there's hope for you. Can I get a witness, friends? There's hope for you. Acts 2, verse 37 and 38. What does it say? Uh, now when they heard this, they were what? Peter was preaching, and when they heard it, they were pricked. When you hear the word of God, it ought to do something to your heart. I mean, you can't, if you hear the word of God, and don't feel comfortable, and, and, and it doesn't move you, something's wrong. And they said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles in verse 37, Men and brethren, what should we do? Thank God, when Christ gets in you, you want to do something. Can I get a witness for it? Then what did Peter say in verse 38? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be what? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you should receive the gift of the Somebody say, Amen, Jesus. Amen, Amen Jesus. God says, you repent, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now let me ask you this. Can refusing baptism, once the Lord convicts you on it, be a sign of rejecting the word of God. Put yes or no on your envelope. Everybody quiet. Just put yes or no on your envelope. If you study the lesson, you will know the answer. I'm just saying how many study the lesson. Can refusing baptism be a sign of rejecting the word of God? Let's put it on your envelope. You study the lesson, you will know the answer. Now, go to Luke, the seventh chapter. Matthew, Mark, Luke, third book in the New Testament. Luke, the seventh chapter, verse 29. Luke, the seventh chapter, verse 29. All right, are you praying for somebody tonight? All right, pray. Somebody needs to get this tonight. Luke 7 and verse... We got to pray when we come to church, friends, because we we have all kinds of visitors here, all kinds of folk here. We have good angels here and bad angels here, and we need to pray, don't we, friends? All right, what does it say in verse 29? And all the people that what? And the what? Justify God. Being what? How did they justify God? Uh, the baptism of what? John the preacher. But look at verse 30. But the Pharisees thought their big shots, and the lawyers did what? Rejected the counsel of God against themselves. How did they reject it? Thought they were too bad, too good to be baptized. Now, friends, let me ask you again. Can, can refusing baptism be a sign of rejecting the word of God? We just read it, friends. How many people yes for that? Let me see y'all. All right. Give yourselves a hand clap tonight. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. One big question before we go to the screen for a quick review. What if I have not full what if I have not been fully taught the major requirements of God? Is it wrong for me to desire to renew my vows of baptism? Well, go to Acts 19, 1 through 5. John and Acts. 
Acts 19, 1 through 5. And then remember also that baptism is a door to the church. But go to Acts 19, 1 through 5. And I want to show you something that you may not have seen before. Acts 19, 1 through 5. That'll shock you. All right. It says, And it came to pass that while, who everybody? Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and he found certain who? These are already church members, if you please. Believers. Verse 2. And he said unto them, Have ye what? Since ye what? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. You see, they were ignorant of a major subject in the Bible. In our days, you might put it like this. We have not heard so much uh, that this Saturday was the Sabbath. You see what I mean? In our day, we might say, we have not heard so much that the secret rapture, we thought it was really a secret rapture. I mean, just put it, you can put it in that context. And then look at verse 3. And he said unto them, what then were ye baptized? And they said, unto what? So that's baptism number one. John baptized when they accepted Christ. Now look at this in verse 4. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of what? Nothing wrong with the baptism of repentance. Can I get a witness? Saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Then, of course, Paul talked about the Holy Ghost and so forth. Then look at verse 5. When they heard this, they were what? In the name of what? That represents baptism. Number two. Now, why were they baptized again? Because they were ignorant of a major subject that could change their lives. And therefore, they felt conviction to do it again. Now, just like when we do these seminars, a lot of times we reveal these amazing truths. Folks step out and want to make a change. It would not be a surprising thing if they feel of the conviction power of the Holy Ghost to make that decision for baptism. Can I get a witness? I did that. I did that years ago. I was baptized as a Pentecostal when I accepted Christ. Nothing went wrong with that. But then I learned some major things in God's Word, like this and this and this and this and that. And then I felt the urge to take the step again because this time I felt I had learned some of the major things of God's Word that I did not know before. You see, so, so don't be surprised if in case the Holy Ghost taps you a little bit and say, take the plunge. Take the plunge. And don't say you don't need it. You shouldn't even say that. It's a privilege to do that, to renew your vows in Christ. And if Jesus could do it, and he didn't need it, he's our example, then we may very well feel that urge again. Baptism is a door to God's church. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap tonight? Tonight, then we'll let you go home. We already did the quiz. Gotta get a witness. Amen. All right, all right. God is committed to what, friends? He is committed to our freedom. When Jesus comes into your heart, He sets you free from the devil. Who's a will let Him take the water of life? What, friends? Freely. Thank God. Salvation is a free gift. Jesus is the Lamb. He died for us. And if we go to hell, that's what Jesus is done for us. It's nobody's fault but our, our own friend. We need to do what it takes. God invites us to take a what? That's what this subject tonight is all about. To take a stand, friends. We can't straddle the fence. Sometimes we want to straddle the fence, don't we? Because we want to save face. But the three Hebrew boys didn't straddle the fence. Daddy the lion's men didn't straddle the fence. They stood up for God and they stood up for his word. There is no middle ground in earth's final war. Can I get a witness, friend? No middle ground. The Lord needs to know who's for him and who is not. We have to take a stand and declare another allegiance. How do we take a stand? To him who loved us and watched us from our sins in his blood. He helps us to take a stand first off. 
baptism is a symbol of what? Commitment and what else? And what else, friend? And allegiance to whom? To Jesus Christ. Baptism is mentioned more than what? 80 times in the New Testament. When we are baptized, we declare our what, friends? Our allegiance. We take a public what? We show whose side we are on. Friends, we preach to some people. How many methods of baptism are there? There's only one. That means there's only one way to baptize that God accepts. One Lord, one faith, and what? Only one way to baptize. And Jesus was baptized where? In the Jordan River. He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was what, friends? Open. Thank God for that. And what did he see? Lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am what? Amen for that. That's the symbol of the Holy Spirit. God anointed Jesus with Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Believers now through the centuries have experienced the joy of making a what? Through what, friends? Through baptism. Very important, friends. Uh, Philip, the Lord told Philip to witness to the Ethiopian eunuch. He witnessed to him. He taught him from God's word. And the Ethiopian eunuch, right away, friend, felt that he should be baptized. So he commanded the church to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water and he baptized. Went down. Can I get away this, friend? And that, that Ethiopian eunuch went back to his hometown and spread the word of God. Now when they came up out of the water, he came up out. Now what does baptism mean? The Greek word baptizo, which means to what? To dip or to immerse. Beautiful. To plunge under water. And you don't need to be afraid. Can I get a witness? You don't need to be afraid. You, you go in and you come out. Simple as that. Uh, one preacher did something. He said, baptize in the name of the Father. Boom. Burn up. Baptize in the name of the Son. Boom. It's, baptize in the name of the Holy Boom. But friends, all you really need to do is just go down one. Boom. Take you up. All right, amen? All right, beautiful. Baptism of Russian king, Vladimir the Great. He felt the urge to be baptized as a king. He accepted Christ. They baptized him. It was not until the Council of Arena in 1311 that sprinkling and pouring were officially accepted as equally valid as immersion in the rite of baptism. But in God's sight, like the man said, uh-uh. In God's sight, uh-uh. You see, that's what this today's seminar is all about. I don't care what man does. In God's sight, is. I like how I said it, it's. Uh-uh. What's the meaning of Bible baptism? Therefore we are buried with him through baptism and to death. The meaning of it is it reflects Christ and it also reflects our spiritual experience as well. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by who everybody? By the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the what? In the newness of life. Praise God. He rose. And because he rose, you get rise. Amen. Amen to that. And we die to an old sinful way of life. We say, Lord, I'm going, I'm taking that old life down. And we're buried our sins in the what friends? The watery grave. Buried in the watery grave. Rising up again out of the water to walk in a new way of life. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, friends? <laughs> Baptism doesn't mean you're perfect, but it does mean that you're committed. And that you're made, that you have made a decision. We have too many wishy washy folk in the world today. They don't know, they go whatever way the wind is going. Baptism is not the end of the Christian life, it is the what? Yeah. Beginning. So you say, well, Brother Christian, I'm not perfect, but if you give your life to Christ and you say, Lord, I'm going to bury it, you may not be perfect. It's just the beginning, but God wants to know what's in the heart. Are you with me, friend? Yeah. 
He promises you the gift of the what? Spirit to empower your life. Let me tell you something, friends. We've got too many Christians trying to be Christians without Christ. You cannot be a Christian without Christ. You need the Spirit of Christ to help you. What happens when we're baptized? Every sin is what? And the Spirit is given to what? And we are adopted into... Isn't that beautiful, friends? Some of us come from broken families. Some of us don't know where our daddy is, our mother is, don't know. But friends, when you are baptized into God's church, you are baptized, you are adopted into God's family. You have new brothers, you have new sisters. You know, some folk will drop you once you accept Christ and won't obey all this work. They want to drop you, but God says, I'll give you some new friends. Are you with me, friends? And if they drop you for doing that, they want your friends in. Then those who have received this what? Were baptized. And that day, about how many souls? 3,000 souls were added to them. And friends, it's because they took heed to the word of God. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were what? Never let anybody down play church for you because the Lord adds to the church those who he is saving. And I hope you said it you and I. For, one, for by one spirit we were all what? Whether Jews or what? So we don't join by letter, we join by what? Baptism. All right, steps of baptism, we must do what? Repent. And you have to ask God to give you that gift to repent. You can't repent all by yourself. Just saying I'm sorry is not going to do. You know, folks say sorry all the time. Don't they? Jimmy Swagger was on TV, time I agree. I am sinned. <laughs> Would he been doing that after he got caught though? You see? If you can say you're sorry before you get caught, then you may have experienced genuine repentance. Can I get a witness for you? Even crying sometimes is not a sign of repentance. You may be crying for other things. But sometimes when the Lord comes on you, even in church sometimes, you may find yourself crying because you broke the heart of God and you really want to do right. You better thank God. He may very well have given you right there the gift of repentance. <laughs> have you ever found yourself just touched, just crying? That's a proof that the Spirit is working on you because the Spirit can't do that with every mind. Some folks have sat in church, and soon after church, you think they never heard a thing. They just sat there, and the word doesn't even affect them. Just don't go. Repent, and then believe. And then you show your belief by accepting Christ and following his word. That's how you show your belief. And learn. What, everybody? Learn. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Should a person ever be rebaptized? You said to them, did, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? We went through that. So they said to them, we're not aware. So much as our brother, there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, that unto what? Then when you baptized. So they said, unto John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed, baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were what? All right, that's Acts 19, 1 through 5. This group was baptized by immersion by John and rebaptized by immersion by what? See, with one preacher you can't do, another preacher you might do. Amen. Can I get a witness, friend? Amen. An individual may desire to be rebaptized if they were what? Once were baptized and then what? Departed from Christ. But now long to do what, friend? All right, number two. They may want to be rebaptized if they are committed Christians who have discovered the truths of God's word and desire to be part of his commandment keeping people. Don't be surprised that the Holy Ghost works on you concerning that. Baptism is a beautiful thing, friends, is it not? Our point is baptism. I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of what? In of the Spirit, friends. Who have believed and is baptized, we'll be what, friends? We'll be saved. Beautiful, friends. Here's what a dying boy said. A dying boy. There's no reason to wait. Move ahead. Follow Jesus. 
be baptized. It will be the happiest day of your life. Jesus said, Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of what friend? When God talks to you, that's the best time to move. Can I get a witness right And now what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized and do what friends. Watch us in the way. Call him on his name. And look at what Revelation says. These are the ones who come out of what friends? And washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Can I get a witness right Therefore they are Baptism is a beautiful thing. All over the world, friends, this gospel of some of the things I've taught already, being taught all over the world, and as a result, all over the world, thousands are being baptized. This is just an example. I want to show you this. This is an example of, of thousands being uh, baptized. That's in one, one country. So this word, preach. This same thing that I'm preaching right here in Memphis. And the folk heard God's word. They heard about hell and the secret rapture and the Ten Commandments and, 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 and the immortal or undying soul. But that's not true. And the seventh day Sabbath. And look at what's happening all over the world. Look at that, friends. God says to them uh, to observe all things. And then you spin the invitation for baptism. And then look at how folk can respond. Look at this. That's another part of the world.